of a uh, surprise guest or surprise surprised guest might be a better uh, way to put it. Jesse Reardon, one of my cameramen from the beginning. I mean, he has been single-handedly responsible for putting together and editing our Hunting Adventures television show for 16 years out of the 17 years. He's one of the unsung heroes of our show. Been all around the world with me many times, uh, many different places. Jesse is an artist, a great cameraman, and uh, like I say, this will be a big surprise for him that he's going to be one of our guests on Shock Therapy. This is Jesse in front of the camera. How does it feel, Jess? I got, I got to ask. It feels awkward. Welcome to Shock Therapy. The rest of the story, the behind the scenes, you've been there. I mean, you and I have walked the walk around the world together for 16 years. And I just thought, man, I could really do something good here if I can just get my foot in the door and get an opportunity to, to help produce this show and film it. I figured, okay, Jesse Reardon is, is the guy. He's gonna go for it as long as he can handle it. Here's the opportunity, you know, give you the opportunity. And, you know, it's up to you to succeed or fail. That's how it works in our organization. The, the thing running this is the enemy. The enemy. Jesse. Yes. Jesse Reardon. Yeah. I, I get, I'd say, a hundred questions a month that have to do with how do I get started in this industry? You have a lot better, I think, perspective on that because you were not part of this industry. You were entirely outside of this industry, about as far away as you could be. So answer that question. How, how do you get a start in the outdoors industry and obviously end up where you're sitting right now? Yeah, because I was a city kid born in the city, who always wanted to be in the outdoors. City of Calgary. City of Calgary, yeah. yeah. I ended up moving to the island, Vancouver Island, where you live. Love the outdoors, but not hunting. Yeah, never hunted. No, fish. Uh, I love fish, fishing, but, yeah. but, but, And, you know, just being in the outdoors. Like. Someone in our organization came to me and... Jim Bissenden. Was it Jim Bissenden? Okay, and said that there's a young guy at a t-shirt shop. But how did Jim, how did you ever... Well, I was working at the t-shirt shop and Jim Bissenden walked in. He's talking about this show that this guy was doing. He's going to Russia and he's going to the Yukon and he was getting Rogue River jackets made embroidered. So I could hear him talking to my boss and I'm like, oh man, that kind of sounds cool. Like filming, photos. You know, outdoors. he's got a TV show outdoors. As he was leaving, I got up to him and gave him my business card <laughs> right in front of my boss. <laughs> yeah, your, your boss, uh, yeah. he accepted that as a, oh, he was probably trying to get rid of you. Is probably, that, what, yeah, that I was it? taking up a seat, pretty much. I had a website up, and I think I gave him some magazines. That, that had to be the magazines, because I remember that. My first memory of you wasn't you, it was your, your photography. The photographs were world class. I, I looked at them and instantly knew whoever did this or felt that whoever did this was a, an artist. That was the key for me. I, I, it's hard to describe how or why you would know, but I knew. Looking at your magazine, what you'd produce, your photographs, I knew you knew composition. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have looked a little closer at, I, uh, at your focus. <laughs> you know, but I, I, you know, at the time, I guess I was artsy to be blurry. Another way I broke out was like, staying on Jim Bissenden, tenacity. So I called him and he's, he brings me over to his house. I'm like, who's this Jim Shockey guy? He shows me your old... Uh, Hunting Adventures like, DVD. Uh, what did you mean? VHSs at that, in those days? Probably. No, it was DVDs. He had a couple was of DVDs. It? I play a couple of DVDs and, you know, Cody Robbins at the time was doing it. You had like limited music, limited footage, and it was just like a loop song yeah, with that's some right. cuts. Was because was, Cody was my cameraman yeah. in those days. And I just thought, man, I could really do something good here if I could just get my foot in the door and get an opportunity to, to help produce this show and, and film it. Therein lies the moral of the story. Before we get to your, your the first trip with us and your start, if you truly want to be in this industry, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. you don't do anything else. Just keep focused on being in this industry. 
and and that's what you did. That's how you did it. Yeah, and it's been a cool job. I, I got to say, like, it's been a really I, cool I know, job. Overpaid too. I'll just add well, that in. Well, you know, we will. That's the other thing. I was going to say, right like, now, at some point, you got to take answer the... like limited pay, and then <laughs> you build it up. That's a monster elk. We need to find him. Saskatchewan came up and Jim Bissenden's like, you know, I'll talk to Jim about you coming up to Saskatchewan. Because Cody Robbins was at the time just editing the whole show by himself, 13 episodes a year for the Outdoor Channel. Filming and ep yeah, uh, I think and filming editing. and editing. And hunting hard in November. Like Cody was pretty slammed, yeah. So Cody needed help. So I was gonna be the relief for Cody. I could help with some filming and I could also uh, just live with him for a month. Cody was had the edit suite out there in Saskatchewan. Yeah, in his where bedroom. He, in his bedroom. Wow. <laughs> Like my first month on the job, I'm working in Cody's bedroom beside his bed, and it's just like, what just happened? If a picture's worth a thousand words, good video footage is worth a million words. You're about to watch the hunt for this great buck. So you and Cody then join forces, and you live with Cody through the entire November white season, season yeah. in Saskatchewan. But there was a catch. That's when you got drawn for an elk in Wyoming. Oh, I remember that. And you needed that. a cameraman. You and I would get in my truck and drive from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to Cody, Wyoming yeah. on Sunday night. Then we'd be there in time to hunt Monday morning in Cody, Wyoming. We hunted for the whole midweek and then we drove back. So I was living at Cody's End doing that then that whole time. I used that trip to plant some seeds with you and get to know you and just prove myself, I guess. So I got some cool photos and, you know, it was horseback. I was from Calgary, but yeah, Calgary Stampede, I didn't ride horses. So <laughs> on my first trip, I'm filming on a horse. That's, that's great. So, and then, yeah, we didn't get an elk, but I yeah. remember we had a few moments where I was like, we were after an elk at one point and I was filming, it was just a disaster. I'm like, if I see this elk, I'm done. I'm not getting this You're not gonna be able, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but it, it, it gave you all the precursors to what's going to happen when we actually do find an animal someday in the future. Isn't that gorgeous? We're just riding up on the ridge, heading up into the high country, and the shed was laying up here. We're looking for just about that, except with another point. So your first hunt with me down to Wyoming, and we failed. For me, that's a test. If you start whining, complaining, breaking down, you know, want my mommy kind of stuff, you didn't suffer from any of those maladies. So I figured, okay, Jesse Burton is, is the guy. He's, he's gonna go for it as long as he can handle it, here's the opportunity. You know, give you the opportunity and put responsibility on your shoulders so that, you know, it's up to you to succeed or fail. I mean, that's how we, that's how it works in our organization. At that time, I had the Rogue River Outfitting Territory in the Yukon. You got tapped on the shoulder to go to the Forks Camp with Wojo. Now, there's a legend. And that was a good first trip to the Yukon. Tell me about that trip with what well, you filmed, obviously. So I'd never seen a moose or filmed a moose, but the first time I ever filmed a moose, it was on a cliffside, and I put all my weight on my knee, and I popped my knee out day two. And then we're staying in a spike camp. This is all new to me. And he's like, you can just sleep under here. It's like a tarp. And like, this, <laughs> and like sitting there freezing at night. Anyways, he got a father-son, these two huge moose. The legend. But there was a little pressure on that hunt because we had uh, Andy York from Loopold. Right. That he, was at that time, he was one of the head honchos marketing, I think, at yeah. Loopold. And they'd purchased the hunt. And he's one of our sponsor mm -hmm. representatives. So yeah, there would have been a tremendous amount of pressure. You know, that's one that I think is on YouTube nowadays. Someone I, put it on YouTube. Way long time, it's got about a zillion views. And this is actually the hunt. This is the Andy York. Okay. This was around day six or something. Okay. We'd had a few opportunities, he had turned down some. And at this point, Andy didn't really communicate with us whether he was gonna shoot or not. Wojo just said he's coming in, if you want him, take him. How far is this right now? Mm, 20 yards, full mm, run. Late September-ish, middle September, or somewhere in there. This is classic, great filming. The composition, you know it instantly if someone has it or they don't have it. I called you guys the special forces. You guys aren't armed. We can see a shot that you can't possibly get. There, there's so many factors involved with 
capturing you know the actual hunt that moment and you mess it up as a cameraman it's over you can't redo it that pressure and that ability to withstand the pressure still produce still succeed in, in uh, achieving your goal it's a big compliment uh, recognizing what you guys have gone through to produce our hunting adventures television show right over the shoulder yes oh, yeah. huh yeah. that was must look full in that framing oh, yeah. it was pretty tight jesse was just, i could hear him <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go. A month up here, more than a month, five weeks. So anyways, next year, I get to go with you. That was my first time to that camp in the Yukon that eventually I basically took over as my family yeah. camp and close friends. You were on my first trip mm -hmm. to, or our first trip to yeah. that camp. We had the Rue brothers, we had uh, Hal Shockey came, we had Greg Kitcho. The first week was like boot camp. The cabin had been destroyed by Grizzly. Oh, that's right. I and remember that And we were setting year. up camp. I had to dig a 10-foot porta potty hole. I was cleaning <laughs> like bird poo off windows and like. <laughs> because the camp was trash. That's right. A grizzly bear got into the camp. Yeah. Literally tore all the shelves out, broke yeah. all the windows. So w that's what we did. We didn't actually hunt. Here comes our clients right over the hill. We got the camp all tickled up, ready to go. We took the Rue brothers, Bart and Rod, and we had one Argo. There was only one <laughs> yeah, Argo in those. Too. Bart's was way out. I remember we saw that moose, like another valley past a valley that I already thought was past where we should have gone with one Argo. Because if they broke down, we're carrying that moose back 10, 15, 20 miles. We had a good moose come in again. I messed that one up. But I got blocked because there's all these willows beside me. And I was like, yeah, and then well, you just welcome to your future life as a cameraman. Good shot, you got him. Thanks for working with me, boys. Yeah, we don't. It's yeah. uh, get what you can and uh, make sure it's great. Otherwise, we'll take you to task later on. We got it, and it was a bow, but it, it could was have a, been yeah, archery definitely, shot. I was caught out of position. That's like the nightmare for a cameraman to be caught out of position. But that's the part of teaching a cameraman who's an artist to become a hunter. Yeah, is they start to learn to read the play to yeah. anticipate what's going on and be in position before it happens. That was the early days, eh? Now, yeah, that was good stuff. The uh, next hunters that came with was my dad, and Greg Gitcho flew in. Oh, yeah, that's... The, Howl, the Howl Show was one of my favorite uh, Yukon shows I ever kind of got to be a part of. Just thinking about that, that was my father's last moose hunt. We went down to a place we called Shockey's Knob, and I called, and a, a bull stood up about three miles further down the valley. I, I looked at Greg and said, Greg, this is too close, it's too easy. My dad, you know, he's, he was 78 at the time. This has to be his bowl. So Greg said, okay, he was, he was pretty nice about it. It was a good stock. I mean, Hal made it. His first shot was a miss. He, uh, hit was it, it a miss? Hit it it he, it, it, so technically, as he, I think he said, oh, technically, I yeah. hit it. Yeah. But it was, it was hit it in a time. And then he took another shot and it dropped. And it was, yeah, it was a, that was a big moment. Take your time. You got him. You got him. <laughs> you drilled him, father. Hey. <laughs> you got... <laughs> Knuckle. That's called knuckles. <laughs> hey, my dad, my hero. I don't care what anybody thinks. What was with the miss? He, he uh, stepped ahead. Oh, yeah, well, it's all in day's work, you know? Hey, Father, good shooting. Yeah. We're going to call it the hole in the horn bull. <laughs> People get to see that bull if they come to our Handyman Museum. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was a good hunt. I always liked that episode. Yeah, that, that, that was, was funny. Memories. So 
just to continue this hunt, so everybody knows the rest of the story, the next day we were coming back to head out to the Big Valley for yeah. Greg to look for a bull. And when we looked up at the kill site, there was a grizzly bear on it, which is perfectly legal. And I had a grizzly bear tag, but I basically pulled rank and said, sorry, Greg. And we went up and got the grizzly bear. Now you got that on camera too. I got that on camera, that was intense. Oh, shit, Jim. Right, because the bear was aggressive, knew we were there. And he's just sitting there drooling, staring at us. That's good footage. That's pretty steady, too. That's probably the first animal I filmed of you shooting something, though. I was a little out of position, for sure, but I think, I don't think I... You know, you're, defending, you're defending your crappy footage? Is I'd that give it? Is it, that like it? A, I'd give that like an 8 out of 10. Uh, see, I'd give it a 6 wow. and a half, yeah. I mean, you were steady, so I'll, I'll bump it up to a 7. But it's, I should have been over your shoulder, but I, I think there's a reason I wasn't. Yeah, uh, loft. And golf it would be. You're lost. probably on a high hill. You like to do that. You like to. You're like six five, and then you like to stand. And, and by, by the way, anybody that in front of is me. a golfer out there probably oh, knows what oh. I just said to you, which isn't very oh, nice. No. Oh. It was really quite rude, actually. Uh, Todd, you want to Google loft, please? Here, I'll just help you. It's lack of talent. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It's your loft, yes. I was just yeah. But it was still. Was but you know what though? Pretty good. That's still good, solid camera work. Yeah, and close and aggressive bear, first grizzly bear in your life, and you're with me, who's it was intense. really understanding when you make a mistake. Well, right? I, mm. Never mind. Cut to yeah, commercial. Let's, yeah, right. Cut. Yeah. Why don't we cut? Do we have footage of that? I think, as I remember it, we were skinning that grizzly bear and quartering. You were just doing the recovery. So we hadn't even started skinning the bear no, yet. No, we were just like. Literally. And there was a herd of caribou across the valley. Yeah including one gigantic bull that Greg had a tag for. There's a whole herd of mountain caribou over there. Except I also had a tag. <laughs> Poor Greg. So, yeah. At this point, after... Greg's like, a, honestly, <laughs> just an observer. I just shot a huge grizzly bear. And while we were actually doing the recovery, we looked across, there's a monster caribou. We're gonna go try and get him now, too. At the time, this was your longest muzzleloader shot, shot ever. Ever, yeah, at the time. So yeah, the, I think it was 279 yards. I think I held, uh, if I remember correctly, 18 inches over where I wanted it to hit, something like that. Okay, ready, yes. What happened? What's he doing, Jess? To get these animals on camera for the hunting adventures, it was an important part of all of our yeah. livelihoods. I mean, if we didn't get it, we didn't have a TV show. If you didn't have a TV show, you know, I don't, you would have been back to doing T-shirts probably. <laughs> Just to finish off the, the Greg hunt, uh, yeah. that was also the first time we went to a place called the Beaver Ponds, and we had one Argo, and it was the older Argos in those days they needed some help, so I didn't want to put hours on it, so we took a boat to the end of the lake, and then we hiked up over a mountain, like 10 miles, and found a whole herd of moose calling, wah, wah, you know, cows bellowing, bulls chasing around. To this day, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I've never seen that either. Like, full on rut going hard. Yeah, as I remember, Greg got his bull, yeah. and then there was another big bull, like 250 yards away, so we ran over there and got that bull. I got it. And then we had two bulls down right at dark and had to deal with it all night. And that was the end of it. Two that big giant moose on the ground two days before the end of the trip. Crazy. Crazy experience. Yeah, memories. And, and you know what's cool? You captured it all on camera. So at that point, I felt pretty dialed in with the camera. This is my very first big international hunt. It was Spain, Turkey, Tanzania, 45 days. But I probably should have been where the hippo was had I not been compressing the shot 50 yards behind you. You would have actually been smoked. Well, I remember thinking like, okay, my wife's home and pregnant and I'm getting charged by hippos right now. Like, I want to meet my kids. You know, you knew the elephants were around there, but we had to go through there. There's no other way. <laughs> we were in a blind and had a lion come up to us in the dark. Yeah, the scariest moment of my life. His nose was right beside me. I literally could have patted him on the nose. He stuck his nose right like that, just like that, and he went, 
one of the most renowned man-eating crocodile lakes, and we're in those little ugly dugouts going across. We're going after giant crocodiles that are twice as long as these boats. Dinosaurs were in the mountains of Turkey. Last fall, the team got together and decided that uh, Jesse Reardon might take one more giant leap ahead and we'll take you up to the Yukon and let you hunt a uh, mountain caribou. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to the fraternity. You're a hunter, Jess. What do you think, boys? Jim, thank you. I never dug a porta potty hole. That's good for you. That's healthy for you. It's, it's not called a porta potty hole whole city boy <laughs> is called an outhouse hole. Okay. You dug the outhouse hole. Yeah. I just had an image oh boy. flash across my mind that from now on, every time I'm in that outhouse, I'm going to think of you. <laughs> <laughs>